Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jumma mubarak to you all. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu, nasta'inuhu, nasta'ufiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yadihillahu falamudilla lahu wa man yudlilhu falahadiyala. Wa ashadu wa la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All praise due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leads astray, nobody can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship, no God but Allah, the one who has no partner. And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessing be upon him. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah haqqa tukatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves. And do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqhu qawli. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka anta al-alimul hakeem. I pray that may Allah open my chest, make easy for me this task and loosen the knots of my tongue so that these words may be understood and glory be to you Allah glory be to you alone that we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us verily it is you who are the all-knowing the all-wise again uh, to you all so in particular light of recent uh kind of events and news and shall I hope this Khutbah uh, may, may be a space where uh, we can find some sort of connection, some sort of healing, with uh, some some sort of way to pick up the pieces in, in the aftermath of uh, difficulty and tragedy that strikes, especially close to home. So the eyes weep, the heart is broken, but we will not utter that except which is pleasing to our Lord. You know, sometimes words are just not sufficient for when tragedy or a loss strikes, you know, particularly when we experience the loss of a loved one, uh, a loss of a close friend or a family member, um, a loss of someone who has uh, just been a part of our own story, our own journey for as long as we can remember. And for some, uh, especially if that loss is quite unexpected and, and is not uh, able to be foreseen in different ways, but just out of the blue. You know, these words that we began with were uttered by our beloved prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, not just on the untimely passing of his infant son, Ibrahim, but the, which was towards the end of his own life. But it was also to one of his companions who had actually rebuked uh, a group of women and, and, and a group of individuals that were uh, openly weeping and mourning the, lice, uh, the, the, the loss of their loved one. And uh, the Prophet had, had uh, you know, gently reminded that companion. He said that what, what's kind of occurring, the, the the tears that are flowing, the pain that's being felt, the sorrow that's that's hitting, uh, that's that's real. That's human emotion. Uh, that you know, this is this is natural. And it was because he understood grief. He wasn't a stranger, you know, to grief and especially uh, to loss that would uh, that would come about very unexpectedly. You know, whether it was the loss of a child or the loss of his wife or a friend of his, an uncle, family member, cousin, so on and so forth. You know, he knew that there was a time when words could sometimes not capture what tears and what real heartbreak and uh, sorrow could really capture. And so it could have been that, you know, just a few days prior with our loved one, you know, and in, in, in anyone who may have lost in a sense that, it could have just been just a few days prior, we were having maybe a conversation with them. Maybe we were having coffee with them. Maybe we were making plans for uh, something in the future. Uh, maybe we were just texting each other. Maybe we were uh, looking at their photos or posts recently on social media. Maybe it was just something in some way that we were uh, just feeling that we were connected to this person as a very recent. Um, and then in the blink of an eye, you know, we wake up in a world where they aren't there anymore. And so how do we even make sense of that? We didn't even have a chance to say goodbye, you know, to try and get a grasp of the situation. And before we know it, here we are preparing to bid that person farewell um, through uh, prayer, through uh, janaza, through a burial in any capacity. And and to think about that, we oftentimes will feel that and in society that this that uh, 
this type of portion is a formal goodbye. This is the uh, this is where uh, this chapter closes, and then we kind of just move on from there. But it's the beauty of our faith that even in death, our connection and our relationship and our memory with our loved ones who pass, it doesn't cease. And, and nor does the impact, even more so, the impact that we, as well as they can still have in this life, uh, continues, that it doesn't have to cease. Our Prophet ﷺ had taught that and had modeled this for us, that instructing that death, and particularly the death of a loved one, is among those things that uh, that serve as a wake-up call. They serve as a wake-up call for those of us who have had the privilege to be able to survive long enough um, to survive those who have passed away, to be able to wake up today and to be alive. It's a call for action. It should be a motivation for us to keep pushing forward, um, not a reason to give up or to completely lose hope, though it's not one that is detached from the emotional pain, the sorrow the eyes that are weeping, the heart that is breaking, um, but it, it it is a call to be able to continue to move forward. But this pushing forward is, is in this action, this moving onwards, it's not one that's done by moving on from the loss of our loved one, as we oftentimes hear, um, or maybe are told to do that, oh, it's time for you to move on, it's time for this. It's, it's, it's quite the opposite within the Islamic tradition of moving onward with the memory of the person, uh, with all that they had uh, impacted you with, with their inspiration, and knowing that your actions today, that our actions today can and do going forward have an impact and uh, on them as well as on ourselves. But as they transition from the life of this world into the next life, uh, that there is so much that is to be gleaned with respect to how relevant it is that what we do here still does have that impact in eternity. And so within the Prophet Sassam's life and example itself, we have somebody who, while having to lead his community, while having to migrate uh, from city to city, while having to do all these different things as a community leader, was that he was someone that as he's marching forward, he didn't just move on from the losses that he felt of his loved ones or that he experienced. And that not only would he honor their legacies and memories in different ways, but he would also feel that pain and the freshness of that loss many years later when he would maybe be reminded of such losses or maybe he'd be uh, something would come to mind that uh, just brings back that memory and that flooding uh, of the emotion that comes back there. And, and he would still continue to live his life in a way that was pleasing to Allah, but he would still be able to feel grounded with respect to that connection, that raw emotion that was there. And so he knew that each moment that was that was given in terms of uh, after this person's passing was a moment that was not to be taken for granted both for him and those who had passed away, because there was still something to be said, still something to be done that could be of benefit to that person um, and also to the community in sharing the memory of that person. So when we ground ourselves here in this moment, you know, mourning the loss of a loved one, we also take heed that this moment is just as much about those of us who are uh, have been given that privilege of being alive or who are still living as it is about those who have passed away and those whom we have bid farewell to. That when you think about in the janaza or the funeral prayer, one of the du'as or the supplication that is offered to the deceased is that, Ya Allah or Allah, forgive our living and our dead. Forgive those of us who forgive those who are with us here and those who are absent, forgive our young and our old, our men and our women, uh, whoever you give life to among us, you know, give them life in Islam. And whoever you have taken away from us, take them away in faith. And Allah, do not forbid us their reward and do not send us astray after them. It feels like, you know, the janazah prayer is a little bit more about the people who are here present in this space, then it may just be about those who have passed away. But it's important for us to reflect on that for those who do pass away, their bodily uh, life or existence, that may have ceased in a sense. But their spiritual life, their memory, all of these other aspects, our own lives, we continue to uh, to go about. So it makes it makes sense that the prayer that we that we lift up is also for ourselves. That can we do better? Can we do something that will help this person who has passed away? Because we still have that capability. You know, Allah tells us in the Quran that every soul is shall taste death, or that 
as it's oftentimes read in different ways, that uh, each soul or every soul is tasting death. And, and we know this, that as we are getting uh, living each and every day, we're actually getting closer and closer to the time when uh, things will wrap up for us and when we will have to meet our creator, that a little bit of us may pass away each and every day, but we're not getting any younger, as, as, as the saying goes. And so our Prophet Sallallahu had reminded us that of the importance, not just to sit on this and to be able to carry, uh, you know, these, these memories and whatnot, but to more importantly, to reflect on and contemplate the aspect of death, the reality of death, because in doing so, we'll find that in not just sitting on and in, in sitting with death, that we, we we become overcome in a sense of like, oh, I can't do anything or anything now. Actually, it, it will give us an imperative of I actually need to get moving and get doing whatever I can because time is limited, because there who knows how much time we've got left. And the most we can do brings about the most benefit, not just for us, but for those who uh, have not been able to uh, have that same privilege. And so thinking about that, we might find when we, ref when we reflect on death, when we meditate on death, when we sit and contempl contemplate death, we might find renewal with respect to life, both in this world and in the life to come. And so it's natural for us to dislike death. We're not, you know, no, nobody wants to, uh, you know, encourage that aspect of uh, liking it or anything like that. But we, we it's natural for us to dislike death. Um, but we are reminded from the Prophet Sallallahu that none of us, none of you should wish for death. Either they are a doer of good, so perhaps they may be able to do some more good, or maybe they have uh, done wrong and perhaps they will give up their wrong ways. And so it's an opportunity. It's a pause. It's a moment for us to be able to just take a uh, step and back and see like how do I want to continue to live my life? And, and a, a very much a clarion call for us to get things right but again, in a way that doesn't just affect us or the people around us, but also those who have passed before us. Um, Prophet Sassam also told us that remember often, remember often the destroyer of all pleasures, referring to death. That, of course, when, when death hits, when we experience the loft of a loss of a loved one, the last thing we feel is pleasure. The last thing we feel is any kind of joy or any kind of moment of positivity. We feel just overcome and overwhelmed and hurt in so many different ways. And, and the Prophet had told us that, remember, often the destroyer of all pleasures, remember that death may just be around the corner. You know, there's a saying of sleep is the cousin of death, that we, we are not that far off from it each and every day. And so thinking about what does it mean when we internalize that death could be something that is awaiting each and every one of us, uh, you know, within the end of, uh, of this moment, this day, or whatever it may be, but how does that affect us in terms of how we live this life? And this translates when the Prophet had told us that the most sagacious, the most wise amongst y'all um, is the one who remembers death the most. And the most prudent one, the most prudent man, one among you is the one who is most prepared for it. So not only thinking about and reflecting on death as something kind of morbid or anything like that, but reflecting on it as, as a reality, as something that is going to come, as with any other uh, calendar invite we might get, uh, important meeting we may have uh, with our employer or anything like that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be sure to see it on our calendar. We'll maybe prepare in advance for it, depending on how it goes. But thinking about if we do all of that stuff for something as temporal as uh, an appointment or a business meeting or whatnot, can we not do something similar for our own uh, eternal meeting with God, that, that, that meeting that is to come, that's promised for everybody? Uh, and in which way can we do that in which we not only remember that this is going to be around the corner, but prepare for it, preparing for it in a way, as we'll talk about here shortly, um, that, that is most befitting to us in, in what we can do for those who have passed before us, for those who are here amongst us, uh, and for those who will come after us. That when we reflect on death, we when we feel it here and the reality sinks in, when we experience it within a degree uh, of connection, when someone close to us has passed away, we realize that the temporal nature of this life, we realize the limitedness, the finite nature of it, that things don't go on forever, that uh, all good things must come to an end. But it should give us that imperative. It should give us that impetus to ask that how can we not only make the most of this time, but also thinking about, especially in processing the loss of someone whose life was cut short. How for us, uh, this st they still had so much to offer this world whose story was yet to continue to be finished writing. It was 
yet to be concluded uh, that with respect to all things they were doing or they wanted to do, there was it just felt like an unfinished chapter. It should hearken for us to not just get up, but to also get going for ourselves and on their behalf. You know, it doesn't have to be, as you mentioned, without emotion, or it doesn't have to feel like we're trying to get to a space where we're without tears or that we've moved on. It wasn't the case for the Prophet ﷺ, who after 50 plus years, after decades, would still weep when he came to the grave of his mother, who passed away when he was six. Uh, that you, He still has these fresh wounds that would open up, that uh, this, this is a part of our humanity. This is what makes us human. But instead, in this moment, you know, where it feels like our world may have collapsed, that we've just, we're just trying to pick up the pieces, something is just, it's, we're in in shock, things have just fallen apart. It doesn't seem maybe a way to make sense of any of this. And our faith calls for us to ask for ourselves that what would we like to see our loved one desire? What would they like to see of us and from us? What would we like to see for them in this time that they uh, transition? That we realize that there's so much of their story that can be and is yet to be lived. That is through both us and our actions. That what we actually do here on their behalf or for them actually has a tremendous impact. And it's not just reliant upon them being here. You know, I've mentioned that just because our worldly or embodied experience with our loved one might have expired or might have finished, our spiritual connection, our eternal relationship and our memory with them, it may just be getting started. And it may just be beginning to blossom uh, and blossoming to different degrees that we may not have ever realized. And so when you see, as our, our tradition shows us, that when we see the dead, when we see those who have passed away, we say something good of them. We, we lift up the positive elements of them uh, because the, the, the angels confirm this. The angels give uh, an amen to this as well. And that the good deeds that are done on their behalf will continue to be a source of benefit and will accompany them in the next life and will benefit those as well in this life, as well as us. And so, you know, whether if we look at what does that look like in terms of how if somebody passes away, uh, whether uh, after a long battle of some health issues, or whether if somebody who uh, unexpectedly passes away or any in any capacity, when we think about what can we do to continue their legacy to continue helping them, we look at uh, the different deeds that are the different options that are available to us thinking about what is beneficial for us here in this life is also maybe beneficial for them in the next life or in uh, in their current space uh, when they've passed away. That whether it might be paying off their debts, righting any of their wrongs, performing even uh, basic acts of faith when it comes to performing Umrah or Hajj on behalf of somebody, fasting on their behalf if they didn't have a chance, if they had maybe a deficit with respect to their fasting and needed to make that up or anything like that, mm -hmm. that one could fast on their behalf if they hadn't made hajj yet, making hajj or umrah on their behalf and helping in this aspect, continuing the work they might have done, uh, upholding the relationships they may have done that we might not have, uh, the friendships that they kept touch with, people that they connected with, the elderly that they would have stayed in touch with. Um, or any charity or efforts that they might have started or participated in, continuing to do this not just benefits people uh, who are benefiting from it or ourselves, but it goes back to this person. Establishing a continuous type of charity, you know, a sadaqa jariya, an ongoing continuous charity that benefits many through the community. And you see people do this through uh, educational funds, scholarships, uh, endowments, water wells, uh, trees that are planted, all of these different things that continue to benefit people for year to come, for years to come. And so, you know, nothing allows us to remember death more frequently than the loss of not just any per any particular person, but the loss of a loved one that is really close to us, that we have a close attachment, a history to. And when we remember our uh, loved one who has passed away, we also must remember death at the same time. You know, we, we, we oftentimes do get absorbed in the memory of the person, of all of the different wisdoms and everything, uh, you know, the impact that they had and all of these different things. And that's absolutely merited that that's there. But it shouldn't also it shouldn't divert us as well from our own contemplation, our own remembrance of death at the same time. Again, it's not a morbid thing, but it's for us. It's a reality that today it was them. Tomorrow it might be us. And so thinking about when we do remember them, when we do honor that memory, when we do reflect on this, we also do it in tandem with respect to a reflection on death, because uh, this chapter, this, this part of the story is written for everybody. Uh, it just comes at different times. And so when we think about it, though, it's also about help, helping us to reframe it a little bit, uh, helping us to 
alter that in a sense. And so when we think about uh, you know this this aspect of remembering death at the same time, you know when we do good and we follow the the person who had passed away, when we are eventually following them into that space as well, when we follow their path of righteousness that they lived, the good works that they did in this world, we also ensure that someone else helps keep our memory alive as after we pass away. That uh, you know what what is the reward for good other than good, as the Quran tells us that uh, we we not only are doing this just for this person, you know, we're doing it for the sake of Allah, but when we put that investment in a space that doesn't expire, that doesn't get affected, uh, we will find that not only will this person's legacy, this person's good be preserved and saved for them, but also the path we play, lays behind as well that we will be in need of to help us will also be there to benefit us when we need it. So although in, in thinking about at the time of this week, in particular, and these the days leading up to today, or even just the past past few months, whatever it has been, you know, it may feel like a really sad and painful ending. In ways, when we when we say goodbye to a loved one, when we when we uh, you know, in, with respect to this life, that we remember that within Islam, death is just the beginning. That it is a beginning for our loved ones who have passed away from this ephemeral, earthly life onto their journey to reconnect with Allah to a new life that has uh, not been confined to pain, that is not confined to sorrow, that is not confined to decay or confined to the limitations of this world. And it's a beginning for us as we go forward with and without them. But it's an opportunity to live our lives in a more meaningful way should we choose to do so. And it's a way that not only carries their memory, uh, that starts a new chapter for them in this life uh, and for them, for all who love them, but also a way for them to be able to continue to be benefited uh, in ways they may not have been able to uh, when, when they passed away. So being able to continue to help them. So as we close this chapter for our loved ones who have passed away, we want to ask ourselves that what will be something good that they used, they do, they used to do that we could do? What can be something that we do on their behalf that will continue to benefit them and those who they loved? And how will we use this time that we've been given that they were not? And may Allah enable us to not only make the most of the time that we've got in this world, but to be able to realize that the end of our worldly life is not just the end of our memory, um, but the impact and spiritual lives and all of these different things that there's so much more to be written, so much more to be said if we only knew. And so today on you know the sacred day of Juma, on the sacred day of Friday, uh, we are also cognizant of and recognizing the fact that uh, we are mourning the loss of one of our very own here at Muslim Space, uh, our beloved Shabana Stationwala. Um, you know, may Allah uh, raise her in rank and elevation. May Allah forgive her uh, and, and, and grant her soul peace and comfort as well to her family at this time that when we are here, we're gathered to accompany our, our beloved sister to this final station of life. Uh, we're here to bid farewell to her as she begins the next chapter of her journey back to her creator, to Allah the most merciful, and will inshallah be uh, ending in the highest of stations that one can achieve, you know, abode that is most pleasing to her and to her creator. Uh, but Shabana is not leaving the station. Shabana is not leaving this place as someone who's unknown, as someone who is a stranger, or as someone who didn't benefit this temporary abode we call life. You know, six years ago or so, Shabana and others had come together and they planted a seed for an initiative, an idea, and a community, and a space that came to be known as Muslim space that would serve anybody and everybody, Muslim and non-Muslim, especially those who were on the margins, those who were feeling left 